Hi, it's Thursday and it's really exciting. We're kicking off my new series today. Last week was sort of an intro and this week we are getting to the nitty gritty. So I'm just going to give a couple of seconds for people to start logging into today's live um, and then we'll get going. We have a really exciting episode coming up this morning um, or this, this afternoon and I would like to just start off by reminding people and this is something that I was reminded of again this morning when I started my yoga class I have this really amazing woman that I um I belong to her yoga studio she's actually overseas um, but I really like to do her 20 minute um yoga classes in the mornings because it's more about movement and getting my body going than it is the serious yoga moves and it just helps start my day really really well um so before we kick off kick off today's session on botanicomy an alchemy of soothing botanic ingredients. Just also reminding, this is Tanya Uester, Dr. T, as most people call me. What I was reminded again in that yoga this morning is um, Kira always speaks about team you <laughs> or team me. Um, and that's quite important because this series, we're going to be delving into very individual components. So the individual aromatics that we find in essential oils. And the reason why team you or team me is so relevant is because we also need to remember that the essential oil itself is a team. So there are very many chemical constituents in an essential oil. And when we start delving and learning about the individual um, components, it's really awesome because it'll uplevel us with the knowledge of how to swap out oils. But we must always remember that all the different chemical constituents in an oil are there and probably work synergistically to support the body with some kind of benefit. So when we look at the individual components, we'll learn why the oils do what they do because they may, for example, contain that volatile, but we must always remember that they are going to be working with the other chemical constituents in that particular essential oil. So let's get started then. I'm really excited about today's um, chemical constituent because it is the most abundant chemical constituent and it's found in, I'd say, probably 90% of essential oils to varying percentages or varying ratios. I can see people have started logging in. So if you want me to say hi, please put something in the comments so I can see you are there. Otherwise, I just see this eye staring at me with a number. <laughs> I can see Quibus has logged in though. Welcome, welcome. I can see that you are joining me to learn more about the chemistry of essential oils, which is very exciting to me. So let's, <laughs> I got a skull. I don't know why I got a skull. Chemistry is not that dangerous. It's actually quite fun. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. Good for you that you are here today to come and learn a little bit about, of course, eucalyptol. It's also 1.8 or 1,8 cineol. Um, and it's, it's the most abundant co chemical constituent, obviously, in eucalyptus species. Um, but believe it or not, uh, it's actually very, very prolific in a lot of the volatiles. And yes, there's probably only 5% of all plant species in the world producing volatiles. Um, but eucalyptol is definitely one of the, those that is found throughout um, in varying percentages, as I said. So eucalyptol is um, monoter it has a monoterpene backbone and the functional group is an ether. Now, the reason I say that is eucalyptol, the OL, would make you think that it has actually got a functional alcohol group, but it's an exception because usually the OL signifies to us that it is an alcohol. And in this and this particular one, this is one of the exceptions. Okay, so hi, Bev. I can see you're logging in as well. Welcome, welcome. So it is an ether uh, functional group and not an alcohol. All right, that's the first quite interesting thing I find specifically, specifically with eucalyptol. And if we then look at what monoterpenes and what ethers do as a group, monoterpenes are very antibacterial, antiviral, so this, you can see these are, this is going to be one of the ones that I really like as a microbiologist. Hello, Catherine. I can see you've just logged in as well. Welcome. So monoterpenes are in general, as a group, antibacterial, antiviral, antiseptic, analgesic, so they can make discomfort less, uh, respiratory decongestant, something that we all need at the moment, expectorant, definitely also something that's going to do really well right now, whether it's for the environmental threat or whether it's because of the pollen and the dust in the air because of the season change is going to be really, really beneficial. It's also a general tonic and immune stimulant. And today we'll dig in to see why I'm, all these properties are actually re relevant for eucalyptus specifically. And then if we look at that ether, that functional group that it has, um, it is anti-infectious, antispasmodic, it can be sedative, analgesic, 
and balancing. So now the sedative part could show you, for example, why with the respiratory benefit, you could put it in a diffuser in the evening um, to give you a nice quality sleep. So all the functionality, in other words, of an essential oil is made up from all its aromatic volatiles that are inside there. And today we'll speak only about one of them. Um, and it's going to definitely work synergistically with other parts in the oil. But those are what the group properties are specifically um, for a volatile with this chemical structure. Quite exciting, don't you think? And not just big words. As soon as you start getting into the chemistry and understanding how they work, um, the wording becomes a lot easier to remember as well, this scientific language that we're speaking about. So aromatically, um, the ether group, in other words, that functional group, is very soothing to the emotions. It promotes feelings of clear airways. Um, when we are going to be using it topically, it's very well known for having cleaning properties, and it helps improve the appearance of skin. Internally, Mm, this is touch and go specifically with those essential oils in the ether um, functionality because it varies on case by case. Some of them actually provide very good antioxidant support when you take them internally, but others should not be taken internally at all. So even though we're talking about specifically eucalyptol today, um, there will be some essential oils that contain eucalyptol that can be used internally, but others that are not advisable. And we will be talking about the safety specifically today as well. So when we think about 1.8 cineol, which is also eucalyptol, it has a fresh camphor-like smell. We all know what a eucalyptus tree um, smells like, and that's that that um, camphor-like smell that we're getting. It's also quite spicy, and it can be very cooling, especially to the taste. Now, here's something most people don't know. 1.8 cineol, or eucalyptol, is used very extensively in the food industry, actually, because of the specific taste that it has. Um, and... Let me just quickly show you. This is the picture I drew yesterday for my reels on Instagram. Oh, I have fun with this. Yes, it may be like really confusing for you. This, so this is part of my art, okay? This is what helps me to relax. So what you can see here is um, the structure. In other words, in basic format, what it looks like. And it is a backbone, the monoterpene backbone. And then obviously you can see there over there is that ether functional group. And if you can imagine that in a 3D structure, not flat like it's 2D on this paper, that green <laughs> is actually sticking out. It's not flat like it is on this paper. But it's a really, really exciting molecule for me. So um, 1.8 cineol actually comprises up to 90% of most essential oils of most species. And it's found in over 200 essential oils, but usually for the ones where the eucalyptol is not the main chemical constituent in less than 10%. Yes, it's definitely still gonna play a role, but this becomes important when you are looking after the specific properties of the eucalyptol. And when you're after those properties, you're probably going to want to use an essential oil which has it in a much higher percentage than for example, a 0.2 percentage. The first thing that's really cool is that it's got um, very good repelling activities. So when you use eucalyptol, so the eucalyptus trees, for example, because those are the species that have the most. Yes, there are other essential oils and other trees and, and herbs that have the eucalyptol high concentrations too. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but it's got really good insect repelling activities and it's used as an insecticide to the American cockroach. Now, I don't know how that compares to South African cockroaches. We may have to test this one, um, but definitely very useful in the industry, specifically for the American cockroaches. Maybe we should uh, go into Science Direct where I'm getting the information from, and if we can test it on our South African cockroaches, we can see and let them know they need to update their research. Hello, Kim, I can see you've just logged in as well. Hello, Bev, welcome, welcome. It's also very extensively used as a mosquito larvicide. So it, in other words, kills uh, mosquito larvae, which is probably a really good thing to know in South Africa. We are going into spring now. Um, and it's also used as a fumigant um, for adult pests such as borers and weevils. So in, in situations where you're storing some goods, um, it may be you very useful to have a cotton ball soaked in a specific essential oil that is high in eucalyptol. Um, and in that manner, have a low toxin method of, of um, keeping the weevils away um, in your grains that are in your cupboards. Uh, if we are now looking at the physical and the emotional benefits, hello Ruthie, welcome. Good for you to join as well today. I think definitely um, eucalyptol was one of the chemical constituents I know you had to use in the last couple of months. 
because of the environmental threat that's going around. And I'm pretty sure that it really supported your body. So if we look at the, the emotional side specifically, and I know I used to in the previous series is do, do um, the emotional at the end, but I think I'm going to bring it into the middle now. Um, the 1.8 cineol is actually very antidepressant. So it addresses a deep emotional. And this is now where you've got to dig deep because this is probably something that most people know they have, but they don't want to deal with it. Um, it addresses a very deep emotional or spiritual issue or the need to be unwell or to feel inundated. Now, think what that means. It means if you're so overwhelmed that you think the only way you can get a break is by becoming sick or playing victim, then eucalyptus is definitely going to be a really, really good essential oil for you because it helps you to feel less afflicted, depleted, despondent, or even defeated, and it helps you to feel more well. Um, and that's one of the reasons why eucalyptus, the essential oil, very high in eucalyptol, is used so very extensively in spas because it makes you feel well. And what do you do when you go to a spa? You go there for wellness. It's usually the one that is sitting in the steam rooms or in the saunas. It helps you to feel responsible and liberated. So it gives you the courage to face your issues of feeling like a victim or wanting to feel like a victim or wanting to be sick to get a break. Um, it helps you to face those issues and those limiting beliefs. So an an exceptionally good oil to use aromatically in a diffuser specifically for emotional support, the ones that are high in the eucalyptol, the 1.8 cineol. And right at the end, I'll give you some substitutions because obviously, you know, we're leaning towards the eucalyptus essential oil here, but there are other oils that have got it in a high percentage or ratio percentage compared to the other constituents in there as well. So if you don't like the eucalyptus, we will definitely be teaching you today which ones you can swap it out with. It's also what we call antitussive. It relieves coughs. Yes, Ruthie, this is why you needed it. So a really good one to have in a diffuser. Um, so it's the ultrasonic cold air diffusers or use it in a steaming cup of water, putting the towel over the head. Old school. Works really, really well. And it's decongestant. Why? Well, eucalyptol has mucolytic properties. I know that's such a nice word to say. You can just feel the mucus in your mouth when you say it and the way it rolls over into your tongue. It basically means, I just had to swallow there. <laughs> it makes the mucus less thick and less sticky and therefore it's easier to cough up. So when you are feeling very congested, this is a really good one to have, especially when it's that very thick mucus. Um, and it's also what we call bronchodilatory. So it opens up, it opens up the bronchi tubes. So there's various test tube studies in vivo, uh, sorry, in vitro and ex vivo. In other words, where they take material from a specific type of organism without too much alteration um, and actually do experiments on it on the outside of the body to see how certain um, essential oils or chemical constituents are going to be working specifically with those tissues. Um, and in these studies, the therapeutic potential of specifically eucalyptus oil, but also the eucalyptol itself, the 1.8 cineol was tested. And it was shown that it supports a healthy immune response because it also decreases the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now, this is definitely something that's very relevant for the environmental threat that's going on around at the moment um, because everything has to do with having a health, healthy inflammatory response so that things don't go into overdrive and that there isn't a storm of certain me molecules that takes place. So that is why eucalyp eucalyptol and the oils high in eucalyptol are so very beneficial. Um, it's also have, it also has uh, disinfection properties and it's been shown to inhibit the growth of vi um, viruses on various utensils and filter devices in the hospital setting. So really, really good to have eucalyptol around. But now we'll also learn in which essential oils the eucalyptol is present in a very high concentration. So um, we look at specifically the eucalyptus. Um, obviously, it's depending on the specific eucalyptus species because there are a couple of different ones and also when they were harvested and what the season was, the eucalyptal content itself is actually going to go up and down a little bit. Um, but it's usually in the range of 55 to 85% of the essential oil, the eucalyptus essential oil. So you can see it's the main chemical constituent. Next up is rosemary. 
So here you would swap eucalyptus, for example, with rosemary if you don't have eucalyptus around or if you don't only want to deal, deal with the anti-inflammatory benefit in a diffuser and the emotional side, but also want to support your memory and focus. For example, rosemary is called the oil of memory and knowledge and transition and transition meaning passing on to the next life. So it's a really good essential oil to be smelling. Um, at that stage, we also use rosemary very extensively, for example, in cooking. Um, but here it's going to have the disinfection properties and rosemary is very well known for being used, especially when you're cooking lamb. Um, and it's very good for wound healing as well. So if you're going to be swapping out the sterilizing properties specifically, topically, you could swap the eucalyptus out with rosemary, for example. You could swap it with basil, which has around 1 to 15 percent, um, so a little bit lower of the eucalyptal when you're feeling very fatigued and you need more focus. Um, basil is also a very good essential oil to be using when you are in your menstrual cycle. Um, it's called the oil of renewal. Really helps you cope with those angry emotions when it's that time of the month. Another oil which is quite high um, in the eucalyptal is cardamom. 25 to 50 percent um, and usually cardamom is one of those that we use very routinely when you're feeling fatigued and confused and it's also the preferred essential oil to resport uh, to resport to support the respiratory tract of for example cats and dogs so because cats are very sensitive to peppermint cardamom would be something that you use instead because it's going to help them with respiratory support there's a lot of um, vets actually that do like to diffuse specifically cardamom for that it's called the oil of objectivity <laughs> the cardamom and then obviously peppermint also has 1.8 cineol in it 1 to 10 percent and you would swap eucalyptus for peppermint for example when you would like to feel more alert peppermint of course being called the oil of the buoyant heart so those are the oils you can definitely swap out with and i can see there are some questions here coming through about internal use we will definitely get to that in a moment but before i get to that what i would like to talk about first is the topical use. So topical, because of its cleansing benefit and its sterilizing benefit, it's a really good essential oil to be applying topically. Um, any oil with the 1.8 cineol in it. So that would be the peppermint, for example, or the eucalyptus, or the cardamom, or even tea tree and rosemary. Those all have it in as well. Melaleuca, in other words. Um, and because of its insect repelling activity and the support that it's going to be providing you topically, it's a really good essential oil to have on or a, a, a component to have on in any of the essential oils that you're using when you're working in the garden, which I've been doing quite a lot lately, planting some seeds, getting ready for spring, going on hikes. It's going to be a really good um, component or volatile to have in your essential oil mix. Um, and you can use any of those oils that I mentioned there that's going to have that insect repelling activity. So for a lot of outdoor activities, definitely a good idea to have a oil in there with a high eucalyptal. Hello, I can see Karin has just logged in as well. Welcome, welcome. Replay always available on my YouTube. Oh, and I never excuse myself from Instagram. I have another device that I do my Instagram lives on and it's really old and it takes about 24 hours to charge the battery and I forgot. <laughs> so the two or three hours that I had this morning when I remembered about it was too little. So sorry about that. I will load this onto IGTV after the event. Um, but definitely the cooling and the cleansing benefit is really good when you're going to be applying this essential oil topically and then you're going to have that insect repelling activity as well. And I think I'm probably going to do that uh, cotton wool um, or um, maybe even a, a, a sort of stagnant diffuser, so a ceramic diffuser or a lava bead diffuser in my cupboards this year um, to try and see for, because my cupboards are open, I tend to get quite a, a few like moths and weevils and all kinds of things um, to try and see if I can, I can prevent them um, from infesting all my good foods this year because I have started to put my things in freezers and I'm running out of freezer space quite quickly. Um, all right, so that is for topical. Let's talk the aromatic we've talked about. So it's a really good um, aromatic or volatile to have in a diffuser because of the emotional benefits. But let's talk about the internal because I think internal um, is usually something frowned upon, especially with eucalyptus, because there's so much bad press about it. And I think it's because um, people don't, they read a headline on social media and they never bother to go and read the full research article. Here I am today to put your mind at rest. <laughs> so 1.8 cineol is a monoterpene ether, as I said. 
It's very pleasant and spicy. It's actually used in the food industry, but at very, very, very low concentrations. And this is key. Despite not being safe for consumption, consumption in large amounts, lower levels of internal usage of 1.8 cineol have been shown to provide several health benefit properties. So here, immune modulating, definitely a really good one um, for that cytokine benefit that you are going to have. But then I would probably be reaching for an essential oil that has the eucalyptol in a smaller ratio compared to the rest of the constituents. So for example, opting for a peppermint instead of a eucalyptus, which is really high in eucalyptol. Um, so just start playing around with that. But if I can just quote the research on the on the internal use, looking at that tisserand guide. Hello, Chantal, I can see you've logged in. You can always catch the replay um, for the first couple of minutes that you've missed as well on my YouTube channel. Um, 1.8 cineol does not appear to be as toxic as often believed, although elevated oral dose certainly is very, very toxic. And here, specifically for younger children. So eucalyptol is definitely one together with menthol that should not be applied topically to the face of anyone under the age of four because it can affect their breathing. Um, and it can be used in very small and low doses for adults. Definitely, if you're using a food grade tested oil, not for children. So always take caution. Um, just as you wouldn't give a child eight panados, um, <laughs> Use with caution and understand that essential oils are very, very potent. So, yes, the industry always says no eucalyptus, no eucalyptol internally. Definitely um, a, a, lot, a lot of hype around that, but definitely a lot safer um, than the average person believes. So if we do look at the internal use specifically, where these adverse reactions took place, it was when, for example, someone drank more than five milliliters of a pure um, eucalyptus essential oil. That's just silly. <laughs> An adult dose is one to two drops, for example. Um, so always use with caution and especially around younger kids when you are going to be um, using the essential oil around the home. So amount per day guidelines is very, very important. Avoid direct oil administration into the near nose and ears. Those are the sensitive areas because that's right there. It's going to go straight into the bloodstream and especially if it's for a younger child, definitely not advisable. When you are applying them topically, always consider diluting. Um, and this is not just to dilute because you want to decrease sensitivity of the skin, which is a really good idea. These oils are volatile. They flash off the skin really, really quickly. So you also want to keep them on the skin for longer. So using the carrier oil is a really good idea to get the most benefit of the essential oil as well. All right, so there is the safety for you. It is definitely an oil that is very beneficial to be, well, I should say, stop saying oil. It's a, it's a chemical constituent that is very beneficial to be used aromatically for emotional support, also for opening up your airways, the 1.8 cineol or the eucalyptol. Very good in cleansing. We now know with the utensils, especially in a hospital setting, how amazing it is to cleanse. So why not make an at-home spray specifically with vinegar and water and some eucalyptus essential oil in there? Um, you can, of course, swap it out with anything like rosemary or peppermint or cardamom or even tea tree that does does contain some of the 1.8 cineol and definitely one that you can be using internally but probably go for the essential oils where you want that benefit specifically that are lower specifically in the eucalyptol content the 1.8 cineol content all right so that was a mouthful today and remember we can never do these things in isolation there's always many other volatiles that are going to be working synergistically with that 1.8 cineol in that particular essential oil. But at least today, you've learned what you can switch eucalyptus oil out with, for example, when you don't have eucalyptus in the home. All right, so the rosemary is really good one. The cardamom is very good. Peppermint, um, the tea tree, all of those are good options. All right, so that's the end of my oil class today. I do have to mention that I'm getting a lot more questions specifically um, from my loyal fans. And the number one question at the moment is, Dr. T, how do you make money? <laughs> because as far as I can see, what you're doing on a weekly basis online in educating is always for free. So I really find this question very exciting um, because yes, you all know it is my absolute passion to up-level and skill people to teach the knowledge so that they can start making their own health decisions. And that is a really important part of my, my daily routine. But my core business is actually 
to mentor people who would like to start their own wellness business just like I did. So either starting it from scratch or incorporating it into an existing wellness business, in particular by incorporating essential oils. So if you are the slight bit intrigued um, and you would like to find out more about how you can earn an income with essential oils, in the comments just go and pop um, join Dr. T. All right. There are definitely terms and conditions. <laughs> the first one being uh, we would need to set up a call so that we can chat to see if you are going to be a very good fit for my organization or not. And number two, if you are already in the wellness industry as a wellness advocate for an essential oil company, obviously this mentorship is not meant for you. All right. So um, hopefully we see each other again next week, Thursday, and I'll remember to charge my device for the Instagram live as well. But I will go and load this replay now onto YouTube as well as IGTV straight after this live has ended. So thank you for coming to learn today about eucalyptol. It was really good to have you on. Um, I'm hoping it's bringing some value and it's giving you some choices um, so that you can start making your own blends or know how to switch out oils. See you all week next week, Thursday. Cheerio.